for having me. My name is Teresa Mosqueda. I'm uh, the Legislative and Policy Director for the Washington State Labor Council and proud to be chair of the Healthy Washington Coalition, this state's largest healthcare advocacy coalition with labor, unions, community groups, and provider associations fighting for healthcare for all. How many of you guys know about the Healthy Washington Coalition? Yeah. And for those of you who this is the first time you've heard about it, find me afterwards because I want your voice as part of that coalition year-round fighting for justice, but also in Olympia fighting for healthcare policies that improve access. So I want to be clear that while I am here tonight and speaking behalf, on behalf of the Labor Council and Healthy Washington, I am proud and I am privileged to be also a member of the Governor's Health Insurance Exchange Board, though I do not speak tonight as a board member, nor do I speak for the board. What I was asked to do tonight is speak on behalf of Labor and the Consumer Coalition um, when it comes to trying to figure out where we're at in this cause to get health care for all at the state level and where we're at in trying to implement the Federal Affordable Care Act. So what have we seen so far? In Washington State, we've seen that we are not immune to what other states and what the nation has experienced. We have seen all too well that there are cuts that are being directed at the working class, at the poor, at women, on people of color, and on immigrants as an excuse and as a way, they think, to get us out of this recession. And it is misguided and it is immoral, and we are not immune and we will fight back. Program. 
Why can't they turn there? Because after years of cuts, that program is nothing but a wait list right now. We have a few people on that program, thank goodness, but there are four times as many people on the wait list for Big Patel than there are on the program. Let me give you just a little bit of context of what we were headed into for this legislative session. As you've heard, um, we are deep in the battle in Olympia right now um, during this legislative session. As we headed into this legislative session, we said, please do not make additional cuts. You have to raise revenue. Instead, we cannot stand for another all cuts budget. Let alone opportunities for us to send letters in, to send calls, to go and testify. 
They force a vote within hours of, of showing the opposite party this budget, and the consequences will be detrimental. Say no I will do that. Thank you. This is a coup to talk. This is a coup, right? And this yes. is a coup that deserves accountability and recognition. We have to hold these people accountable, and their names are Senator, Dem the three Democrats that I'll name are Senator Tom of Medina, Senator Kasima of Puyallup, and Senator Sheldon of Potlatch. So if you are constituents of these folks, you please call them. If you are not constituents, please call them and tell them that their effect, their consequences of their actions will affect the rest of the state because of the cuts that they impose. So they pull both bills to the floor because they now have a majority, right? This coup brought bills to the floor in their hijacked efforts, and they proposed a budget that decimates health care. It kills funding for the disability lifeline program, medical services. It cuts $44 million from the K-12 system. It cuts $30 million from higher education. It cuts around $311 million from social services and health care programs. And this is all that I could muster in the few hours that we had a chance to review it. This also cuts critical services at places like Harborview, our state's only level one trip trauma center in this state. This is catastrophic if this budget goes forward. And there is a pattern to these cuts. These cuts come on top, uh, they're, they're cut on, there are cuts to the working poor. <coughs> Hopefully I don't have to go to emergency room. <laughs>
same process is being replicated in Olympia, where the industry individuals, um, the corporations, the lobbyists who do not want to see the Affordable Care Act be implemented anywhere in this country are alive and well down in Olympia. And we need your voice. We need your voice now more than ever to help implement some of those policies. From the outset, you heard, you heard the lobbyists from the industry say that they would be fine with uh, going forward and, and having health care reform. You actually heard um, some of the industry lobbyists say that, um, that they would not stand in the way. How many of you remember a press conference that Obama had in 2009, I think it was in March 2009, where he brought in a big table and it was televised and it was a commitment to begin working on health care reform. And the, the AKIP group, Americans Health Insurance Plan, said, and I quote, you have our commitment to play, to contribute, to help pass health care reform this year. We heard almost those exact same words from the industry lobbyists all throughout legislative sessions this year. They came to the table, they said we want to play, and then they did everything they possibly could to defeat the implementation of the Affordable Care Act piece of legislation that we had this year. Everything they possibly could. They testified against it, they walked out of negotiation discussions, they walked out of the room, um, and they lobbied in a pack. You saw the Association of Washington Businesses, along with the health insurance underwriters, along with the brokers, along with Primera, and along with Regions, walking together, lobbying as a pack, trying to do everything they could to defeat the law. And there were some concessions made. But at the same time those individuals were walking around as a pack, we were walking around as a proud group of individuals who represented consumers saying we have to have some legislation this year. We must begin to work forward towards implementing um, the insurance exchange bill. And many of you may be familiar with the exchanges. The exchange um, is a, a new marketplace, for lack of a better word, that will be providing uh, premium assistance to individuals who are middle income below 400% of the federal poverty level and who are working for or not eligible for Medicaid above 133% of the federal poverty level. The theory is that you provide premium assistance and tax credits to these individuals so that health coverage can finally be affordable. But a lot of this is left down to the states to implement. And we've seen states like California be brave and say to insurance companies that there are certain regulations that they're not going to continue to play on outside of the status quo, that they need to come in and they need to offer in this new insurance exchange. I would say that the insurance exchanges in theory have the opportunity to force companies to compete on quality, access, value, and health outcomes instead of what they do right now, just on price and avoiding the risk. But I would also say that the insurance exchanges have been now a centerpiece of the Health Reform Act simply and in large part due to the amount of concessions that were made at the federal level because they took out the public option and some other key pieces that I know a lot of us wanted. This has now become the piece of legislation that's the centerpiece for trying to improve health care. So while it is not the best model, um, it is a model to begin to improve access to care and it has a lot of hope, a lot of opportunity for making sure that people get those tax credits, that they get those dollars in their pocket and that they can finally go get health coverage. But when we try to implement this little piece of legislation in the state, we saw echoes, we saw repeating attacks on health coverage and implementation like we saw in D.C. Many concessions were proposed by the legislative members because of the attacks from the insurance um, industry. But we were successful in doing a few things. I'm, I'm happy to report that as the industry started to say, we need this, we need that, we need this, we need that, and some concessions were made, they kept coming back to the doors pounding and asking for more, finally the naked truth was exposed. Finally people be able, were be able to see that, that all they cared about was their bottom line and protecting the status quo. They wanted a minimalist approach, something that mirrored the skeleton of the federal law. And we were able to push back in the final hours and get a few things implemented this year. So I'm happy to report that on Thursday, after some political posturing was played, actually by the same people who were holding up the budget and forced their Republican budgets to come down, we finally actually got a piece of legislation passed with the Senate on Thursday, and 4 o'clock today, the House passed it. It is on its way to the governor's office. Um, Um, and a mother from Spokane who had her brother and the uncle to her kids die 
after months of being sick, not being able to get into the doctor, had a doctor's appointment, the next day he died the evening before his doctor's appointment. The health insurance exchange could help provide a premium assistance to that individual so they could finally get coverage. It's important for people like McKinney, who owns Plum Bistro here in Seattle, who came down to testify to say, I want to provide health coverage to my employers, my employees, because they deserve it. But she cannot find an affordable and comprehensive option on the market right now, and the insurance exchange small group market should be able to help her. It's important for people who are like us, wanting to work towards incremental changes so that we can implement a better system, a real system, a true system of reform, and this is one step. So while, while we have a lot more to do, we need your voice. We need your voice to be added to the individuals who are down there. We had a huge group of Healthy Washington activists down there, and we got some major pieces in there. What we saw was that mm -hmm. on the Senate side, the public option was included twice. In two pieces of legislation, twice it was added back in, and then it finally got cut off the chopping <laughs> We saw the, that um, the fight for the basic health option, which provides coverage for people below 200% of the federal poverty level, we fought to keep that in because it really makes health coverage affordable because those individuals, it's questionable whether or not their health care will be affordable. We saw that language stay in, and then it got cut at the end, and we're going to have to come back and fight for full implementation in 2013, though some implementation will happen this year. But the two major things I want to leave you with in terms of wins. This will, this will allow us to create a quality rating system for to hold insurers accountable so we can compare apples to apples. How long was the wait time? How much do things really cost? What's the true out-of-pocket cost? And we can build that quality rating system together. And the final significant policy piece is that people can no longer offer catastrophic-only coverage on the outside market. And then if they offer a crummy low-value plan, they also have to accompany it by offering higher quality value plans. This is not the saddest thing to talk about, but those are pretty big policy wins after getting shut down piece after piece by the insurance lobbyists. So I would say that every piece of, of the insurance exchange um, legislation was a hard-fought battle. And it is not going to get easier. These guys have a lot of money, our premium dollars, and they're going to come back and fight and fight and fight. And nothing in the federal law will get implemented if we don't do this at the state level. So we desperately need your voice. We want you with our wolf pack. We want you to be part of the voice that goes around and actually talks about the people that will benefit from coverage. So I look forward to working with you on three fronts. In closing, I want to see if there's people here who are interested in working on three fronts with me. One is to demand an end to corporate welfare and endless warfare. We must oppose these right-wing budgets and end the corporate politicians' reign on both sides of the aisle. And we must make sure that they do not continue to undermine our safety net and our society through cuts and codes and misguided policies. <laughs> Two, I want to work with you to fight to protect and implement components of the Affordable Care Act because corporate interests are shipping away at the federal statute and shipping away at the intent of the federal law, um, making sure that they are just playing raw politics and they are trying to do everything they can to undermine what is currently there. It is a stepping stone. It is not perfect, but I think it's a, a possibility to keep working on it. And three is to continue to advance single payer as this is true health care reform. Mm -hmm. Because you are human, because healthcare is a human right. Thank you for everything you do.